Hello everybody, it's Kayla and welcome to my very first Meteorology Monday vlog. Today I thought that I would record our Meteorology Monday instead of vlogging because I'm tired of writing. <laughs> I wanted to talk about a topic today that I'm most passionate about. It's my favorite topic. It's the reason I got into meteorology in the first place. I wanted to talk about why it's so hard to forecast tornadoes. So in meteorology we have three different kinds of scales. We have the global scale which is like the whole world. We have the synoptic scale which is more like the size of the United States. And then we have the mesoscale, which is more state by state or region by region. Within the mesoscale, we have systems such as tornadoes. We currently don't really have means of forecasting the mesoscale any farther out than, say, a day or two. Because we can't forecast out very far with these mesoscale events, we have a really hard time forecasting supercells and dry lines and things that ultimately spawn tornadoes. So, tornadoes. Why are they so hard to forecast? Why can't we ever get more than, say, 10-15 minutes before we get a tornado warning? Why can't TV meteorologists be more upfront and say that there's a 100% chance of tornadoes today? Why is it so hard? The problem mostly comes from what we're working with. Fun fact, up until 1950, the word tornado was illegal to use in the United States because it instilled panic. So, if you're thinking about that, that's technically only 69 years worth of even looking into tornadoes. Because of that, tornadoes weren't really researched or looked into until the 1970s and 80s with the first Vortex project. Another reason they're so hard to forecast is because we simply don't have the technology. Right now our models focus mainly on just the synoptic and global scale, which makes it really hard for us trying to forecast the mesoscale or just the region, say North Carolina, South Carolina. Because the models aren't very good at forecasting for these smaller, smaller areas, it makes it really hard to pinpoint exactly where systems like supercells or dry lines or fronts that can cause rotation to form. Add on top of that, we know how they form. We know generally that they form when there's cold dry air coming off the Rockies, mixing with the warm. Moisture coming off from the Gulf of Mexico causes a lot of spin causes a lot of dynamics, causes a lot of flash rates and all that stuff. Way too technical, we'll not get into that right now. But in general, we know how they form. The question is we don't know why they form. Take two different supercells, for example. You can have two that seem exactly identical. You can have the same setup. You can have the same day before scenario. But one will produce a huge tornado, and the other won't even spin up anything. That's where we as meteorologists are trying to figure out what is that deciding factor that changes the situation from tornado watch, meaning something might happen, to tornado warning, something's happening now. As we've talked about on a bunch of previous Meteorology Mondays and Technology Thursdays, there's a lot of specific severe weather parameters that go into making all this even possible. We need helicity. We need convection or heating. We need latch rates to be really steep. We need there to be a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. We also need there to be a cap that keeps everything under pressure until it can all explode and turn into a supercell. The problem we're still facing as meteorologists is we're not sure which one of those factors, or heck if there's even an unknown factor, that causes something to click inside a storm and turn it from just a storm into a tornadic storm. We can't forecast these smaller scale events accurately enough to tell you say on the east side of Concord, North Carolina that there's going to be a tornado at 5.32 p.m. It's just not going to happen. Right now we're getting better at forecasting in general a slight risk for tornadoes or we've got a moderate risk for severe weather, which includes hail and wind. As we're launching more satellites and updating our global models, maybe in the future we'll be able to forecast these smaller scale events. The Storm Prediction Center out in Norman, Oklahoma definitely does its best to get regions of the United States within categories such as slight risk, moderate risk, enhanced, or high risk for severe weather. And they do a pretty good job, but we're not at the point where we can limit those little areas to specific towns. Right now it's just kind of a swath where we guess something is going to happen. Mind you, it's an educated guess, but as the saying goes, meteorologists get paid to be wrong half the time. Technically it's not our fault, and if we can be right half the time, hey, it's a win in our community. With the way technology is advancing, maybe we can go up to 60 or 70 percent. Unfortunately, there's just a lot about the atmosphere that we don't understand yet. And for a day out, we're pretty good. But it's just not practical right now to be able to forecast these specific events in detail with the knowledge that we have. 
hope you guys liked this little look into why tornado forecasting is so hard and what we have to work with and what we don't yet. If you like this topic, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that we know and comment below another suggestion. What else would you like to see? Do you like this new vlog format instead of blogging? Definitely let us know and I'll see you guys next week.